Hello Pisces, welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. Your reading has something, something profound, um, new to say, and we're gonna see if I can get it out. If I can make it comprehensible. Start with the bard. Music, poetry, myth, history, the enchantment of storytelling. So there's something, something about the power of story about the idea that everything is a story. That we, right, we tell stories in our heads all the time. That we create through story. Through a narrative. And I just noticed, I've never really noticed this before in this card. I'm usually focused on the bard himself, but I've noticed that he has in his bag this figure, this like king and a knight, and I'm, right, maybe they're puppets or, you know, figurines that he uses when he tells the story to a group of people. But there's, there's something about that, something about about characters in our story. That things are perhaps not as momentous or as big as we think they are, and yet that we are much bigger than we think we are. So we start with this elk seeing this sort of eclipse happening. And he, he doesn't look surprised really. He looks sort of, you know, as if he's saying, ah, yes, there it is. There's a satisfaction. Like he was waiting. And this eclipse is having an effect on him. Right? There's this orange glow here, and then there's this orange glow through his antlers. So there's some sort of connection that is happening for him and that he is fully aware of. So under, under the elk, we have this Ten of Cups. And actually, I'm just seeing below that is the tower. But the Ten of Cups, and then at the bottom of the deck is the Nine of Wands. So this, this image is a staircase and rising up. And that's actually a waning moon there. which we are, as I record this, we are, the moon is waning on its way to the new moon in Capricorn on January 11th. So the final, right, a final staircase before the next thing Right, that's a nine, and then I've actually got three tens going on here in this first row. So there's first this ten of cups. Actually that way, ten of cups. All, right, all of the things, all of the colors. All of the energies. And 
And then this is repeated here in this Ten of Pentacles. Again, all of the things. All of the elements. Um, the Pentacles are, you know, thought of as the Earth element. But the Earth herself and all that exists upon it are combinations of all the elements. Right? We as humans are combinations of earth, air, fire, and water. And then this zebra, and I want to say, right, that here at the third eye is everything, right? This rainbow energy here and in that Ten of Cups is all here, right? It all exists within us. Um, it's kind of this idea of the holographic universe. So that in each particle, you also get the whole. Right? That's the idea of the, the hologram, that, that every, every bit contains the whole. It's like one of those jigsaw puzzles um, right? that has all pieces that are all the same size. Kind of, right? They all contain the whole. Um, and the, the puzzle itself is the same shape, right? So if you have, you know, puzzle pieces that are a frog shape, when you put the puzzle together, you get a big giant frog shape. But every piece contains the whole. And so all of it is there. Pisces at the third eye. And this is true for all of us, but you Pisces, at least, or particularly the Pisces that show up here at this channel, or anybody that's watching these Pisces readings that's drawn to them, there is something particular about your um, I don't want to call it a mission. <laughs> uh, your desired plan for this life. Included an exploration and expansion of these esoteric, spiritual, metaphysical, woo-woo, out there ideas. And so all of you that, that come here, this is, right, this is part of what you came here to do, is to seek and create understanding of these principles, right? That you contain the all. And that to understand this, Right, is to be able to get through the thicket. You know, it's a bit like um, saying that, you know, you're, right, if you're Sleeping Beauty and you've woken up, you still kind of have to get out through the thorn thicket that's grown around the castle. Right, out into into real reality, right? If we think of the castle and its environs and all the people in it and, you know, surrounded by this thorn thicket as, you know, what we think of as normal life, right? What lies beyond that is all of this real reality, right? What is actually there? that universe of consciousness and energy, 
um, and will and soul. So recognizing, right, recognizing that, that the totality is within you will help you to get past the thicket and will help you um, move past this idea of lack. I feel like this is, this is one of the biggest forces, if we want to say, that moves through the world and that gives us a lot of what we don't want. <laughs> this perception that there is not enough. That if I don't act in a particular way, then I won't have what I need. You know, and it, be, it can begin so early. Um, you know, parents who need, you know, who are very focused on right getting their kid into the right preschool and into the right kindergarten and so on and so forth, so that the kid can reach the right college and you know have all of the things, be successful. And all of that is, is kind of, right, it's a lack idea that if they don't do all of the things that they won't have what they need. But if you know that you contain the all, then this isn't even a question. I mean, you're not, right, there's no lack and you're not alone. That's the other... Right, the other aspect of the Five of Pentacles is this sense of aloneness, of being pushed out. But if you know that you, right, that you contain the all and that everybody contains the all, then you are not alone. Nobody is alone. Right, it's a perception problem. And what this will give you, right, stability, and I think you can see that, but the other thing that it will give you, and actually below that is courage and grace, but at the bottom of this deck there is actually success, and this secret spring. this secret source that isn't really right it's i mean it's sort of secret people don't don't know but it isn't being kept a secret at least i don't believe that it is not by other people Right, we did, for some to some extent, have to forget this if we were going to create the whole story. I often, you know, sometimes I'll be watching something and I'll think, well, that's silly. Why would anybody do that? But of course, it's a plot point in the story. And if it didn't happen, right, it's like if, you know, the teenagers didn't go alone to the cabin in the woods, right? We wouldn't get the whole story. Sometimes things are necessary so that we can, right, so that we can have the story, so that we can experience the, the meaning and the themes and all of the um, emotion that we get in a story. And we are all here in the physical to experience that, for source to experience all of those things, to know all of those things. So we did have to forget about the secret spring. At least most of us. 
But I, I think that in every generation, there are people who come to remember the secret spring, come to know and understand this truth of the all being within each of us. And so we have growth and growth in the toadstool way. So growth that is interconnected, growth that happens in all kinds of different places and under different conditions. Uh, that's right, sort of a concept that's been coming up for me, this idea of conditional life, right? Of only feeling good when good things are happening. Of allowing what's going on outside and circumstances to really sway your own stability. Whereas mushrooms, toadstools, right? They grow all over the place. They grow on dead wood. Um, they grow in basements. Um, there's a fungus growing in the Chernobyl reactor that converts radiation into more mushroom the way trees convert sunlight, a different kind of radiation. So growth that is not so dependent on exact circumstances, right? Toadstool growth rather than say orchid growth. <laughs> Although orchids, if we take them as a whole massive group, there are thousands, do kind of cover, you know, every niche individually, but each individual orchid, right, can be a little fussy. Um, whereas mushrooms are masters of conversion. Then we have gratitude and acceptance <laughs> coming together. So gratitude or appreciation, I tend to like that word better. It has a, an airier feeling to me. Uh, being grateful, being appreciative for all the wonderful things and also acceptance of where you are at the moment. Right, if you watch Abraham, they call it making peace with where you are. Right, you're here. I accept that. Now. Where do we want to go from here? We're not going to push against where we are, right? We're not going to create resistance. We're not going to focus on the problem. We're going to turn our gaze in a different direction. But first we have to accept that we are where we are. And so I think you, you are really mastering this Pisces. And the ability perhaps to be, to be grateful, to be appreciative of exactly where you are, of understanding how all the obstacles that you've passed through, how all the plot points <laughs> have led you to this place. Witch of fire. another sort of master of conversion, of, right, of magic, of creation with fire, which converts in its way as well. Right, it's a, it's a oxygenating 
process that is the flame. And below that we have the four of air and actually the four of fire. So these, right, more senses of stability, right? These stable thought. So the ability to direct your own thinking in the direction that you want. And then stability of, of fire, of inspiration, so that you are not acting impulsively. Right, that you act on inspiration rather than on um, kind of triggered impulse. Right, impulse that's the result of pain or um, this lack sense. At the bottom of this deck is the Ace of Air. And I was just doing a personal reading yesterday and this really came up and it's doing it again here as the creation of a new perspective. This isn't a sudden revelation. This is something that you, as the spider has created all these strings, you created this for yourself over time. All of the, right, all of the reading, the work, the self-exploration has created this this whole new mental space. And a new mental space will lead to a new physical space. One that is based on collaboration, co-creation, uh, telling the story the way that you want it to be, rather than uh, the way somebody else wanted it to be or the way you learned about it. You know, and actually this card, um, and maybe this will, maybe this will mean something to somebody specifically. Often when I just say this stuff, it does. So there's this, right, there's this white horse. There's a horse um, in Britain that is made on the chalk hills. And there is, uh, in, in a Terry Pratchett book, there is a horse like this that actually comes to life when one of the characters is in need, right? The horse is where she grew up. It's her home ground. And when she is in need, the horse comes to her aid. So there is always aid that will come to us, right? We are always standing on our own ground when we know that we are the whole. And so we have the Wisdom Keeper. The person who, he's been coming up sort of as the person who kind of holds the thing together, not through effort, right? It's not like he's running around and talking to everybody in the village and the tribe and, you know, making sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to and making all the plans and doing these things. He does it, right, just as he sits, right, as he does his divination work, as he does his contemplation, as he you know, just talks to people, right? I sort of see him, you know, just having conversations with people. Just, right, his very beingness is the, the, the center point that keeps the whole thing stable. Not through his effort, but through his being who he is, holding the beliefs that he does. Right, then his own knowingness of himself and everyone else as the whole. So 
So then we have the world card. And in this Witch's Wisdom tarot deck, the major arcana go in reverse. So the fool is zero, as usual, um, called the pilgrim here. But then the world is one rather than 21. The shaman is 21 as the magician. And so here this is leaving, right? This is definitely a very kind of ending beginning idea of the world card. Moving out, right? You have, you've made your way out of the thicket and you are heading out into the real, real. Through your beliefs and how you will now be moving through the world as a whole. Um, you know, I don't know that, that the old will burn as it is here, necessarily. I don't think that it needs to. But maybe it only needs to burn kind of in your own mind, right? Maybe that, or maybe it burns as a conversion. Right, part of the process, right? In, um, in alchemy, that is calcination, where something is burned completely down to the ash, right? When it can burn no more just mineral ash elements in their basic forms. And after calcination, then you put things back together in a new way, right? To a fire. Recombining things, recreating the second half of the conversion process. And doing so in a very inspired, creative way. So we have the eagle. And I think this is, right, this, this thing is, is this section is a bit how you may be perceived. Because there's a whole bunch of characters kind of that come out here. There's the eagle, right, who has the ability to see, um, to, you know, swoop down on what they want. Right, they can, the eagle can see that rabbit moving from hundreds of feet up and swoop down and catch it. Then below that is this kind of ethereal, magical heart of the sky. I mean, this is a very sort of Piscean image of someone who is mystical and magical and kind of, um, you know, not really having their feet on the ground. Although below her is Pachamama. So it may be, I, you know, Pisces, you are, you are someone who can shift and change as the situation demands. So these may be ways that you appear to people depending on the moment and what that group of people needs. And again, this is, right, this is not efforting. This is a natural process that is going to, that you're going to get, you know, better and better at if you, you know, if you aren't already. So there's this, right, this ethereal, very sort of Piscean kind of thing going on. And then there's this, um, Pachamama character, um, like the Empress, Taurus, Venus, and Venus is exalted, an honored guest in Pisces. 
So this is a role that I think could come easily to you if you allowed it for yourself. At the bottom is this vision quest energy of just being so excited just to be alive. Really enjoying things, being that person who just takes joy everywhere they go. And who cannot, right, who cannot help but spread it just by being who they are. And then the child. I was thinking this morning, often people talk about Aries as the first sign and Pisces as the last. And I think I don't like to do that because the zodiac is a circle. I don't think there is a first and last. Um, you know, often Aries is considered the child and Pisces the old person, but I certainly know a number of Pisces who are very childlike. In fact, I think of some of that sort of pixie Piscean energy, the, the elven, um, right, the water child kind of energy, right, of being fun. And of, of keeping, um, keeping eyes of wonder, keeping a beginner's mind. And then the rainmaker. Uh, someone who makes things happen, someone who manifests easily into their own life and sometimes even sort of manifests for other people. Um, I don't believe that you can manifest in someone else's reality, but I believe that you can that you can be such a strong influence that you bring everybody into the sphere, right? Your belief, right, that it's going to rain is so strong that you bring everybody along with you, right? This is more of this changing things by just who you are energy. And then the circle. Um, the person who brings people together. Um, I don't want to call it the peacemaker. I don't, right? I don't think it's about that for you. Um, there might be other people, other signs, um, you know, Libra perhaps, uh, Leo, Aquarius, um, who may be bringing people together through you know, a shared sense of purpose or a project. I think you bring people together just because it's beautiful and it's fun and it's joyful. And people come together not, right? They're not coming together for some specific purpose, just to be together and enjoy one another. Um, to enjoy the story. So, advice, Pisces. Um, there is this nine of cups. <laughs> Be happy. Fulfill your own wishes. Remember, right? Remember that the all is within you. Now below that we have the seven of cups and this I want to say is remember uh, your co-creation with spirit, right? These two getting together to create this new vision. And then below that is the six of cups. So also remember the story, right? This little girl has created this world, right? 
and right in the in the imaginal realm right all of these stuffed animals come alive so to remember, remember that you always have access to the imaginal realm, to that childlike sense of wonder. Um, now at the bottom of that is the Ten of Wands repeating. Lots of repeating. Have I said that in your reading? Lots of repeating cards. Um, right, that you can leave the weight behind that you don't right you don't have to carry it on your back because it's within you right this always feels like a portal here to me right you can just <laughs> go through the portal and the card next to that is the sun actually just because oh look the magician <laughs> of course of course, the magician. And then we have this very joyous four of wands. Um, I think this is less about creating structure and more of this, right, this stable um, inspirational energy, right? This is a repeat of this four of fire. So to be, right, to have exuberance, but to act from, right, from that heart-based impulse. Stability of vision and inspiration. And then we have the hanged man, which is associated with water, um, often with Pisces. So, right, the ability to see things differently, uh, the ability to spend time in contemplation, to, you know, to pause when that is necessary. And with this one in particular, right, he's sort of acrobatic to be flexible in your thinking and how you move through the world right that and that is one of your gifts pisces and the gifts of mutable signs is flexibility and then we have the three of cups and the three of pentacles um also right another repeat so co-creation um bringing things together, keeping a unified will within yourself, keeping your own internal world in a state of harmony. Right, remembering that, that you always have help when you need it. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit of Rilke. Um, I'm actually going to read two things that, that I was only going to read one, but now that I see the other. <laughs> so two things, and one of them is sort of a New Year's thing, a little bit. Uh, both of these excerpts are from Letters to a Young Poet. Nothing alien happens to us, but only what has long been our own. We have already had to rethink so many concepts about motion. Now we must also begin to learn that what we call fate comes not from outside us, but from within. Just as for so long we were mistaken about the movement of the sun, we are still mistaken about what lies ahead of us in time. And then... As you unfold as an artist, just keep on, quietly and earnestly, growing through all that happens to you. You cannot disrupt this process more violently than by looking outside of yourself for answers that may only be found by attending to your innermost feeling. 
Pisces. I hope that I managed to make this clear. This is one of those readings when I feel as if there may be something that uh, didn't come through, but perhaps it will come through in the next reading as we move forward. Uh, today, when I'm posting this, Jupiter, who is the traditional guide for Pisces, is stationing direct. Um, I think about 9.30 p.m. Eastern time tonight. And then he will begin his forward motion. So I am, I am very curious to see where this all goes, Pisces. For you and for the rest of us. I wish you all the very, very best and I will see you next time. So long.